I've come today to another unique site, this time just beyond the boundary of the Peak District. It's a place of history and views. This is White Nancy. White Nancy is a Grade II listed landmark at the northern end of Kerridge Hill, just above the town of Bollington. This small industrial town on the southwestern boundary of the Peak District has an industrial past and was famous for cotton spinning. In fact, looking over Bollington, of which the views from up here are amazing, you can see some of the old mill buildings. Although not within the Peak District National Park itself, this monument and the town of Bollington actually lie on the boundary walk of the Peak District, and also on the Gritstone Trail, from which you'll see signs on the walk up here. Bollington's the closest place that you can walk up to White Nancy from, but I actually walked in from Reno, which I would argue is a nicer walk. Following along the river, you pass lots of these old industrial mill buildings of different ages and time periods, and you also get the added benefit of passing Walkmill Waterfall, which blows you away the first time you see it, especially if it's got as much water coming over it as it did today. On a nice clear sunny day like today, exploring those woodland paths and the little mill ponds and things you'll see along the way is a real treat. Although, do be warned, because the final ascent up to White Nancy itself is going to be steep no matter which way you come from. For anyone interested in doing the exact walk that I did today, be sure to head down to that description box because I'll leave a link to my All Trails map which shows you where I walked. Once you've done the steep walk up to White Nancy, you'll be 280 metres above sea level and you're going to be rewarded with some spectacular views in every direction. The views east to the Peak District are great, you see the rolling hills and you've got a great view up to Shining Tor. The views back behind me across Bollington are really nice and beyond that you can see Manchester on the city skyline. In fact, on a clear day like today, you're actually going to be treated to views as far as Snowdon and Shropshire. If you're not necessarily familiar with the landscape around you, don't worry, because if you head to White Nancy, you can see on the stone slabs at the base of the folly, there's compass points set into the stone. No wonder the people of Bollington made White Nancy their town logo. It's got a very distinct shape, and sitting at about 5 metres or 18 feet high, you can see it from miles around, especially down there in the town. Completing this unique shape, you'll see a stone ball at the top of the folly. This is painted black in contrast to the white body of the structure. This ball finial was actually crafted by local stonemason Ted Allen, so there's even more of a local connection there. Before White Nancy was built, on this site there was actually a beacon. This was part of a network of beacons across England and could be used to warn the country of invasion should the worst happen. The structure in this viewpoint are definitely a very popular place to come and visit. It's quietened down a little bit now, but when I first got here, there was lots of crowds of people. It is the weekend and a nice sunny day, so that's to be expected. I can see why lots of people would come up here, the views are spectacular, and that only adds to the point of exactly why this site was chosen to build the folly in the first place. Like many of the sites in and around the Peak District, it's been here for a while and it has a great history to it. It was built in 1815 by John Gaskill and was actually a summer house initially. At one point long ago, it had a door in it and you could go inside, but that's long been blocked up. Inside the structure itself were benches and a large stone table made of one stone slab. That's important and I'm going to come back to that later on. It's said to have been built to commemorate the victory of the Battle of Waterloo and on the 200th anniversary of the victory of the battle, White Nancy was actually painted to commemorate that. That's not the only time that it's been painted over the years. Other than its regular coats of white paint to keep it gleaming on the hilltop. Over the years, it's been painted to celebrate and commemorate a number of reasons, such as the Queen's Jubilee, the Olympics, Remembrance Day, and at one point it was actually painted pink by vandals. There's parts of the structure where the render of the paint's actually been chipped away and you can still see some of that pink paint. I believe it was only back in 2005 that this act of vandalism took place, so I guess it's not that long ago in the grand scheme of the history of White Nancy. But what was the significance of that stone table that I've already mentioned? Well, that actually comes into the folklore of how White Nancy got its name. It's said that for that large single piece stone slab table to get up here, and believe me, it's steep getting up here, you needed strength more than men. And that's why horses were used to drag the table up here. Now, it is said that the lead horse of that pack was a horse called Nancy that was supposedly white, and that's why it got the name White Nancy. There are also theories that in the Gaskell family there was a member called Nancy, and that might be why it's called that, but I think I prefer the horse story. It's fair to say that I think White Nancy's made a great impression on me and I think it's well worth coming and visiting here yourself, should you be in the area. It's a great little structure that's cool to look at, but I think most importantly, it's the views around you that you come here for. 
I mean, just sitting here in the sun and looking out over the surrounding countryside, I've said it before and I'll say it again, it makes you feel extremely lucky to be able to live in a place like this, or close by at least in my case. So will you be coming to check out White Nancy or have you been here before? Let me know down below in the comments. And while you're at it, and if you've enjoyed the video, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It's the best way to help this channel grow and for these videos to push out to a wider audience. I love making them and having even more of a reason to come to places like this and I hope to bring you many more in the future. So if you've stuck around till now, thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye.